Cyrus Frost here. For a while I've been wanting to do a video series on fleet building in Star Citizen. This is a more complicated topic than it may initially seem to be, and getting the most out of your fleet for your money requires some forethought and preparation. Part 1 of the series will define some terms, and if I talk about things like pledging, melting, or buying back, and you're not entirely sure what I mean, then this is the video for you. If all of that is familiar to you, feel free to skip ahead to Part 2. In Part 2, I will explore ways to maximize your options and minimize your expenses when building your fleet in Star Citizen. So like I said, this video is primarily aimed at newer backers. And remember that anything that currently costs real-world money will eventually be attainable in-game with in-game currency, so please don't go spending money you can't afford to part with on a video game. With that disclaimer out of the way, let me start off by explaining a couple of concepts and defining a few terms that will be useful to help you understand this video and the next. Star Citizen is a crowdfunded game. It isn't being published by a video game publisher, as most AAA titles are these days, and a corollary of that is that there's no publisher financing the development of the game. Instead, the game relies on backers pledging money in support of the project, in exchange for which they will receive one or more of the many ships which are currently or will eventually be flyable in the game. This practice has enabled the scope of Star Citizen to grow far beyond what was initially pitched. At one point, it was stated by CIG's founder, Chris Roberts, that if funding ceased entirely, there would still be enough money on hand for them to finish Squadron 42 in Star Citizen. This comment was made some time ago, and the company and project have both grown considerably since that time. I personally believe that we're well past the point where financial failure is a real possibility anymore, but it isn't clear if that old statement still pertains given how much growth we've seen since then. In any case, CIG have taken steps to incentivize the continued pledging of new funds. One of these steps is to offer certain perks to customers who shop with new money. One such perk is war bond pricing, typically a 10 to 20% discount on a given ship if it's bought with new money versus store credit. Another is the inclusion of lifetime insurance on ships purchased with new money. This perk protects you against the possibility that your ship can ever be lost to you for any reason. You may have read or heard various opinions as to the necessity of LTI. CIG's public stance is that it is a minor convenience. The most recent information we have is that insurance is supposed to represent a minor, recurring in-game cost, and, contrary to what was once understood to be the case, the timer on a ship's insurance policy is confirmed to count down in real time, even while you're offline. So the value of LTI is subjective, but with all things being equal, you might as well get it if you can. It's also worth mentioning here that LTI is typically only available during a ship's initial concept sale. The term concept sale refers to the window of time when a brand new ship is first announced. When this happens, CIG introduces us to the new ship, showing us some concept art and answering selected questions about the ship from the community. Players will have the opportunity to buy the ship with either new money or store credit at the lowest price for which it will ever again be available. Lately, this window has lasted for about a month, at which point the ship is no longer available for purchase at all. If you miss out on the concept period, it may become available again down the road as part of a multi-ship pack, and will almost certainly be available again during the week-long annual Star Citizen Anniversary Sale in November. Ships briefly become available one more time when they complete development and become flight ready, but they almost always go up in price at that time. So some more terms. The process of returning a ship that you've pledged money for is known as melting that ship. If you ever melt a ship, you will not be given a refund. Instead, an amount of credit will be applied to your account equal to the value that you spent on that ship. This credit can be applied to any available items on the RSI store. In order to be given a real refund, you need to contact customer service, and you may or may not have your request granted. CIG's policy has evolved over time, and there have been several high-profile articles on the internet written by backers claiming to have been denied a refund upon request. Whether these are true or not, I cannot say. I can say that I have never attempted to obtain a refund. Like I said before, please do not spend money on a video game that you can't afford to do without. Getting back on track, an interesting thing about ships you melt is that you can buy them back at any time, even if they are no longer available in the RSI store. This can be done at will by spending new money. Otherwise, once per fiscal quarter, each backer is issued a single buyback token, which allows store credit to be applied to a buyback. These tokens are not cumulative, so if you don't use your token from quarter 1, it is destroyed and replaced with a new one at the start of quarter 2. This is an important concept to understand, and in part 2 of this video I will explain why. Another important thing to note is that not all ship purchases allow you to play the game. In order to play Star Citizen or Squadron 42, you need to purchase a ship that comes with a game package, or add one or both to your purchase. However, doing it that way represents an additional cost over and above the ship you're buying. You can kill two birds with one stone at any time by buying a Mustang or Aurora game pack, but as these packs are not concept ships, they won't come with LTI. 
Now, rarely a new starter ship is concepted, and when this happens, you can get a starter ship with Star Citizen and LTI for around 40 or 50 bucks. The last time this happened was when the Origin 100 series was released. I say it's rare because prior to the 100 series, there hadn't been a starter ship game package with LTI offered since the initial Kickstarter back in 2012. At the time of the 100 series sale, CIG said that we may see more starter ships in the future, but they didn't confirm if that was a definite thing and certainly didn't offer any kind of timeline for when it might happen. These opportunities represent the holy grail of value in Star Citizen, and in part 2 of the series I'll explain why you may want to consider melting and rebuilding some or all of your fleet if another one ever happens. And finally, the last thing you need to know when considering how to build your fleet is the cross-chassis upgrade system. This system allows you to upgrade a ship you already have to a different ship of greater value by paying the difference for a one-time token. Once you purchase a CCU, that token will appear in the My Hangar section of the RSI website, and you simply click on it and then click the Apply Upgrade button. Choose from the list of ships that appear which one you would like to apply the token to, and the change takes place immediately. There are a couple of things to know about CCUs. If you buy a CCU but don't apply it and subsequently melt it, it will be available in your buyback catalog in the future, and you can either pay cash or use your quarterly store credit token to reacquire it later on. If you apply it and end up melting that ship later on, the amount that will be credited to your account will be equal to the base ship cost at the time you bought it plus the CCU cost at the time you bought that. However, you will only have access to the base ship in your buybacks. Applied CCUs are gone forever. You can CCU a ship that you've already CCU'd as many times as you want to, but remember you can only CCU ships to ships of higher value. If you end up with a ship worth $100 and you decide you'd rather have a ship worth $75, then you have to melt the ship you have and buy the $75 ship and you'll get $25 in store credit left over. Importantly, when you CCU a ship, only the ship changes, so you keep the insurance and any other perks which came with the original ship, which is pretty nice. So that about does it for breaking down what you need to know in order to intelligently approach thinking about fleet building. And in part two of this video, I'll cover how to use that information to maximize your money. See you there. That's all for today's show. Thanks for watching. If you're new to Star Citizen, or you know someone who's thinking of playing, you or they can earn 5,000 UEC on your account by registering with my referral code, which you can find in the show notes down below. If you have any questions, feedback, or episode suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And if you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>